In this video, I'm going to show you an easy way to update your countertops with foils. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right, we're starting off today with a little table that we actually made and it's out of MDF and we already had a finish on this table from a prior video. So all I did was scuff sand and I just repainted it with the white undercoat. Now, if you'll notice, because we have a rock edge, the table was originally black. I have some of that black kind of peeking through. I'm not really worried about that because I'm going to fog with two colors of paint that sort of matches the colors that I have in my foil. And the reason I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna bring a lot of interest to that edge. Even some of that black may kind of peekaboo through, which all that's gonna do is create depth. So we created this rock edge using a Cutsall shaping disc. And then we went over it with a thin layer of Bondo just to give it a little bit of dimension. If you really are interested in how we do this, I'll also link a very detailed video on how we do our rock edges in the description below. All right, so I'm coming in with a taupe color, any color, any paint, doesn't matter. And I'm just gonna kinda hit that with a little bit of the color. I'm not doing it 100% opaque. And I'm letting it kinda flow over to the top just a little bit. And then I'm gonna come back with uh, ivory, kind of an off white color. There, doesn't have to be perfect. All we're doing is creating undertones. All right, I'm not really worried about the surface because my foil is very opaque. I'm really not gonna see a whole lot of the color underneath. As long as it's similar to the color that's in your foil, you'll be good. All right guys, so I found a little bit of a orange that's gonna pull just this orange coral color out. And I'm very, very lightly going to hit it very randomly on the edge as well. All right, so what we're gonna be using for our design element on this piece is absolutely some of my very, very, very favorite things to do ever. And it's use decorative foils. I've been doing them for years and now I'm combining it with the epoxy and it is a perfect marriage. So what the foil is, it's a design and look at this design. It is the most gorgeous marble and it is put onto a carrier. And in this case, the carrier is just a clear piece of plastic. So this is the actual material or the foil. You're just seeing what it looks like through the clear carrier. So when you get ready to put it down onto your surface, you're gonna put it ugly side down so that you see your piece looking up. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to apply a foil adhesive and in my experience, and I've been doing this for over 20 years, I absolutely love the foil adhesive that's on Jennifer Ferguson's artistic painting studio website called Artsyville. Absolutely love this adhesive and the reason I like it so much is because I'm super busy. I may have five different projects going on at the same time. And with this adhesive, what I can do is I can roll it out, let it dry to a tack, which means it's gonna be very tacky, but when I touch it, my hands are gonna come off and it's gonna be clean. Now at that point, I can wait five days, I can wait five years. It's never going to go beyond that stage. So what we're gonna do, I have my adhesive, like I said, it's a water-based adhesive. It almost looks like an Elmer's glue. And have it on my roller, and I'm just gonna start painting it on. Now, I don't want it to be so thick that it's gonna take hours and hours to dry. I wanna put on a nice, even coat. Now remember, your foil is going to stick everywhere there is adhesive, so if I don't want the foil to go down into these low areas, just don't put any adhesive there. Uh, but if you do, you gotta make sure you really get that adhesive down in to that area. 
I'm using a nap roller. You can use a foam roller if you want. You can use a paintbrush. I don't really like to use a paintbrush because then you uh, have a tendency to be able to see the paint lines, but there are projects where using a paintbrush is just the easiest method of doing the application. Now it's going on white, but it's going to dry crystal clear. Now if you get too much, it's gonna dry a bit cloudy. What is so cool about the, these foils and this adhesive is I can put it on just about anything. My ceiling fans in my house have foil. My tennis shoes have foil. I have a hat that's got foil. Now there is a special adhesive that's made for textile. So if you have clothes that you want to do, I have several pairs of blue jeans that I've done my foils on and it's actually washable. The adhesive that I'm using right now is not washable. So I would not want to use it on a piece of clothing that I'm going to plan on washing. So I got it on there nice and even very lightly kind of go back get rid of the heavy lap lines and we are done we'll let that dry for about two hours overnight is recommended especially if you're in a cool area um, in a humid area it takes a little longer to dry but usually two to four hours is a good kind of rule of thumb okay we're back it's the next day. We were going to finish this last night, but we ended up shooting our YouTube live, which we do every Tuesday night at seven o'clock central, uh, where we actually did a foil finish during the live. So if you wanna check out that video, we'll link it in the description of this video. All right, so here we go. The glue is very much dry. The way I check that is take my hand and I touch the surface and you'll hear a little pop as you pull your hand up. And when you do, you'll notice there's nothing sticky on your finger and none of the glue is coming off of the substrate. So you know you've got a really good finish. All right, so here we go. We're gonna take our foil. Again, what the foil is, the product is put onto a clear carrier, which in this case, it's the plastic, and we're gonna just lay it ugly side down all right now it's important to know that there's a lot of different types of foils all right this particular foil is kind of sensitive you have to be kind of careful uh, but it is absolutely beautiful and it's worth the extra time it takes to do the application we'll get started over here now there's a lot of ways to do this if you have someone to help you on a longer run like this it might be easier so what I'm gonna do because I have a long run and I really want that to lay perfectly straight down the middle I'm going to voluntold my helper here all right so I'm gonna stretch it out so we're gonna put this right down the middle all right and then gonna have Luke just very lightly work towards me. He's not gonna go all the way to the edge. He's gonna leave about a half an inch where he's not going to rub it down. Okay, we're a little bit crooked. And we're a little crooked, that's okay. Because we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do the seams and you're not gonna be able to see at all where one seam starts and one seam stops. All right, so I'm gonna cut this. Now I'm not worried about any of the wrinkles I'm gonna show you how to deal with that. So what I'm gonna do is come in with a very soft cloth. This is just a microfiber cloth and I'm just gonna rub it down. And like I said, I'm only gonna go about a half an inch or so to the edge. And the reason I do that is I don't want to have a hard line where my two seams are going to meet. So by leaving a very soft edge, I'm going to be able to build and blend the two pieces of foil together. Now, when we have a wrinkle like this, I'm not really worried about that because what I can do is lift up my foil and I can do what we call burp it. See how there's some of that coming off? We're gonna go up and then we're gonna lay it back down really tight and that's going to take 
those air bubbles out. If we have more, we can just readjust as we go. Okay, so now that I've got it down, what I'm gonna do is come back with my scrub brush. And this is just a little scrub brush I got from the dollar store. It's not super hard. It's about a medium, I guess, hardness. All right, all right, so now we're gonna come in, we're going to really scrape and scratch, but what we're not gonna do is this. If we do a circular motion, that design or that pattern is going to transpose down into our finish, which is what we do not want. Now on our edge, I'm gonna have to pick it up quite a bit. I'm gonna lift it, push it down, lift it again, so that I can really kind of get down into those highs and lows. Now, you can see that there's some of the areas that didn't get any material, that's okay. I'm gonna address those here in just a little bit. Now, see how the pattern is coming off the carrier and some pieces are staying? That means the adhesive didn't pull that off the carrier. So right here, you can see there's a little area that I missed. All you have to do is go back with your finger, pull it, and you can fix that. Now understand, you're not gonna get normally 100% of a release. That's why it's really important that you paint your background a color that is dominant of what's in the foil. So any of those little pieces that pull up, you're not gonna see a different color. You're gonna see something that's gonna blend really well with your foil. So all I'm gonna do is as I go, I'll kind of pull. If I see any place that's missing, that's pulling up, I can go back. Now you'll notice that my edge is coming off and it's not a straight line. See how it's kind of a broken line? Now the reason I'm doing that is when I overlap and come back, you're not gonna be able to see a distinct line. So that's how I'm gonna hide my seam. All right, I am loving how easily the foil is releasing from the carrier. And the reason is, is because I made sure that our adhesive is totally dry. One way to tell if you didn't let your uh, glue dry long enough is when you start pulling it up, you're gonna actually be pulling the glue off of the substrate. That's one way. Also, you'll just see that the foil is just not releasing at all. So that's two different ways you can tell that you didn't let your glue set up long enough. I don't know if that's an official tool, but I sure do love my finger <laughs> to be able to get these little bitty pieces. Works out well. Okay, so now we're getting to where I had a wrinkle. So what I'm gonna do is as I pull up this wrinkle, you can see that some of the foil stayed on the carrier. And that was because there was a wrinkle right there. Now, I'm gonna lay it back down and it's gonna go back exactly where that wrinkle was. And then I can scrub it and it'll come off. All right, here we are at the rock edge. Take that, now you can even take your finger and kind of push down and get in some of those lows. But what I'm gonna do is pull it off and then I'm gonna go back because I can still feel, if you'll feel on these lows, they still feel tacky because they're still adhesive down in there. So now what I can do, a lot of times I'll have salvage at the end and I'm gonna cut this a little bit so it's easier to work with. Now I can take the salvage and if I want to, I can try to maybe line up if there's a pattern I'm trying to line up, but really you're not gonna see this a lot. So now I can take it and just take my finger and push it down into these little low areas and you'll start getting some of that to come off. Now I don't want 100% coverage on these edges and the reason is I'm gonna put glaze in these rock edges just to kind of take my edge to the next level. Now you'll notice 
it's not sticky anymore because I have a release of the foil. All right, now let's do our edges. Since most of this is a rock edge, I'm not gonna waste a whole run of this pattern. So I'm just gonna come about, I don't know, easy work amount that's easy to work with. I'm just gonna take this now I'm gonna overlap. Remember how we had our, our seam be real jagged? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come now, I'm gonna overlap about an inch, half an inch or so. Take my rag, and again, I don't wanna push hard here because I don't want a hard line. But now I'm gonna rub all of this, little scrubber. All right, now when I pull it up, you're gonna see now my seam is completely hidden and I don't have a hard line. Come back, hit this edge, use my fingers, get into the rock edge. Now, if you, this table, I'm kind of reusing it. I think if I would have fabricated a table just for this, I probably wouldn't have done a rock edge just because I think it would look really pretty with a smooth edge, but I didn't want to waste this table, so that's why we're using it. And I kind of like it. I think it's going to look really cool when I come in with the glaze. So let me know, guys, what do you think? You think this would have been prettier with a rounded, flat, smooth edge, or do you guys like this? edge that I have on here, this rock edge. All right, we'll come up here. We'll overlap again. And remember, because all of the adhesive is dry, if I lay down this foil and it still has foil on the carrier, I can rub that all I want. And that's never gonna come off because there's no adhesive here to pull it off the carrier. Be really careful when you are scrubbing once you've put your foil down, don't go off the carrier and scratch actually onto the foil. This is very delicate. Until we get a top coat or epoxy or whatever it is that we're gonna put on top of it, be really careful because it will scratch very easily. So one little pro tip, if you get an area that doesn't have the foil, maybe the foil didn't release uh, and you want foil there, but you notice it's no longer sticky for whatever reason, you can now that we've completely finished our piece as far as taking out all of the foil, taking off all the foil, now we can get detailed. We can go back and I can take a little bit of that adhesive with the paintbrush and I can go back and if I really want to get detail and add other foil or add more foil, I can paint just those particular areas, let them dry, come back, release it, and then that's how you get, fix all your little tiny, minute little imperfections. So the reason I'm, I'm doing this, you don't have to do this with all your foils. The reason I'm doing this on this particular project is because I have a rock edge. Even if I do a rock edge where I use only epoxy, I'm not using foils, almost all the time that I do a rock edge, I'm gonna do a glaze. Because to me, it just makes that rock edge pop, makes it look 3D, makes it look a lot more realistic. But if I were doing this as a smooth edge, I would, I would never be doing this. So this is not something that you have to do. Uh, I just, that's just my faux finishing background coming out and I really like to kind of take my pieces to the next level and make them look a little bit more realistic. I'm using Rust-Oleum Decorative Glaze. I get this at Lowe's and for the price point, this is probably one of my favorite glazes. If I had to choose an all-time favorite, I would probably pick General Finishes. 
uh, Van Dyke Brown glaze is my one go-to for sure, especially some of my higher end pieces that I'm doing. But I absolutely love this. It comes in a very tight second place. But you can also do glazes out of an acrylic paint, mix it with some Floetrol and a little bit of water. That makes a glaze. Uh, you can actually use an oil-based paint and instead of mixing it with a glazing medium or water, you're gonna mix it with mineral spirits. So there's all kind of ways to make glazes and I do have a video uh, where we talk about rock edges uh, and glazes and I'll link that in the description of this video. If you're doing this on a piece that you're going to uh, then put epoxy over and remember, I don't have to put epoxy on this, guys. I could come over this with an polyacrylic. I could come over it with any kind of high quality sealer. Uh, I can even come straight over this with the ultimate top coat. That would be gorgeous. But uh, if you're gonna put epoxy, which I am on this piece, you need to make sure that your glaze is 100% dry. Being that this is a water-based glaze, it's gonna take a little longer. So I would budget a full 24 hours in your dry time. Uh, if you're in a warmer area or if you put maybe a heater in the room, you may be able to cut that down to six to eight hours. But again, it's gonna depend on one, the product you're using, two, your humidity and your heat in the room. All right, one more pro tip. If you do epoxy first, then you decide to do your glaze. You do need to scuff sand a little bit that surface. Uh, being a rock edge, it's going to be really hard to get at all those crevices. So I would suggest just using a 3M uh, Scotch-Brite pad and just, just a little bit. That's all you have to do. Okay, so I've done the whole table and I'm going to come back. And this has already been on the surface a little bit. So now what I can do is it's kind of, it's kind of muddy right there I will, and it's got some high points. So what I want to do is come in here with a clean portion of my cheesecloth and I'm just gonna kind of do it my hand like this and I'm just gonna kind of almost dry brush just to take off that little bit that's on these highs so I get just a little bit more dimension now I see right here I'd, I'd like to kind of maybe add a little bit more come back in here tap it out and there we go now this is one of those things where you can just really get crazy and get super detailed and that is completely up to you how much time you want to spend coming back and making your edge really, really cool. Alright guys, so we decided to finish this project today. It's been about mm, six hours or so. My glaze is dry. It's pretty warm in our shop. So my glaze dried a lot faster than I thought it would. So makes for an easy day. All right, we're gonna come back with three ounces per square foot of our Art Coat Epoxy by Stone Coat Countertop. Basically, we'll be done. Um, I think I'm probably gonna go one more step and apply the Ultimate Top Coat Matte. Let me know what you would do. Would you go with a gloss or would you go with a matte? Let me know. Now, technically, we don't have to put the UTC. This is going to be just a little sofa table so it's not going to have a lot of high traffic so honestly i don't even have to go to the next step but the reason i am is i want this to have a matte finish so i think i just made my decision right matt all right here we go all right i'm going to heat it up a little bit Heating it allows that epoxy to come, become a little bit more fluid and it flows a little easier. So I'm just kind of taking my hand pushing it down so that epoxy gets in all of those low areas. Run my hands up underneath the piece, push that epoxy so that the epoxy flows. Remember, epoxy likes to go where epoxy has already been. So by me taking my hand and pushing that epoxy over the edge, it's gonna help that epoxy to flow evenly. 
All right, hit it one more time. What you think? I love it, I love it, I love it. What a simple way to create a stunning piece. Guys, this, <laughs> This looks straight up like a piece of marble. I love it. What I really like about the foils is that you can also incorporate these on your vertical surfaces and carry that pattern up your backsplash. Maybe if you have an integrated backsplash, I love it. Love being able to do this. Okay, we're gonna let this dry for 24 hours and then we're gonna come back and put the ultimate top coat. Like I said earlier, I could stop here. I do not have to go to the next step and put the ultimate top coat but because I want a matte finish, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That's also gonna give me some extra durability on this piece. All right, guys, if you are interested in how we built this little table, it is literally a piece of scrap MDF that Kenny built. We just took our Medex, it was scrap left over from a kitchen that we did, and then he just put a reveal. So the table itself is only three quarter inch, but then he came and put a reveal on the front so it looks like it's a really thick slab. Then he did the rock edge, which we will link a video in this video uh, showing you how he did that. But it just took him just a little bit of time and we created a really cool accent piece for almost nothing. So don't throw your scrap wood away. All right guys, so it's been 24 hours and now we're gonna put the ultimate top coat on. Now, like I mentioned earlier, if this were a high traffic piece, I would put another clear flood coat, but because it's just a little side table, I'm choosing to save time and go directly to my UTC. Now, if you are not confident in applying the UTC, and this is a regular color coat, meaning I actually did a design in the epoxy, I highly recommend that you do do a clear flood coat. And the reason is, for some reason, if I ever had to sand down the UTC, this extra flood coat or clear coat is going to be my barrier between my color coat or in this case, my foil and my UTC. I wouldn't sand down and cause damage. I'm kind of sorta good at the UTC, so I'm gonna skip that and I'm gonna go straight and apply it now. All right, so the first thing you wanna do, if you're doing a gloss, then you want to sand this uh, and be very, very careful not to get really deep sanding pattern because you will see that sanding pattern and those scratches show up through the gloss UTC. If you're doing a matte, what I recommend is coming in with a 320 and sanding it and sanding all of that shine off. That way, when you do the ultimate top coat matte and say you miss a little micro piece or something, that's not going to show through. So it kind of like you pre-matte the surface and that way, if you do miss anything, you're not gonna see it. All right, so we have sanded the top, obviously, I don't wanna hit the edges with the uh, sander, so I'm gonna come back with a Scotch-Brite and I'm just gonna rough up those edges. Now, you don't have to do this with a power tool. You can do it by your, you know, by your hand using this. It's just, obviously, it's easier if you have a sander. All right, here we go. All right, guys, so I'm using the 3M sanding pads. We will have these available on our site. Uh, and they work really, really well. Now, I don't wanna get too aggressive and get down into every little low because I may have to uh, sand too aggressively, but that matte UTC will take care of that. All right, once everything's been sand, I wanna go back over it. 91% isopropyl alcohol, clean all the dust. Once I do that, 
I wanna be very mindful and not touch it with my bare hands because I don't want any of my oils to get down uh, and affect my next coat, which is the UTC. So we're getting ready to mix up our UTC. It is imperative that you prep your rollers prior to mixing everything because once A and B hit, you've got maximum of about 15 minutes to work with this product or it starts to get thick and the thickness is what's going to cause you to have excessive texture. Uh, another pro tip is use warm water when you're mixing, especially now that it's getting cooler. It just helps the product mix so much easier. All right, so I'm doing three ounces of the UTC. I'll be doing two ounces of A, one ounce of B. All right, so we do have a very detailed video on our YouTube channel, and I will link it that gives mixing instructions and some pro tips to get a beautiful finish with the UTC. You want to mix A and B first prior to putting in your water. You'll see the product is thick until we add that water in there. I like to add a little bit of water at a time. Make sure you hand mix. Don't use a drill to mix. Be sure to get all the material off the sides and off the bottom. Scrape your stick and then what I like to do is when I pour it into my pan, scrape my edges and then I'll mix it just a little bit once I get it into the pan. All right, here we go. So when I apply my UTC, I wanna make sure I get plenty of product on the surface. So I'm gonna saturate my roller. Then I'll come down get really good coverage. Now what I don't want to do is put too little product. If I put too little product on here, that's when I'm going to start getting my lap lines. And I want to go both directions so that I can ensure everything is covered. Now for this particular piece, I'm going to actually do my surface and then I'm going to come back and do my edges. Being a rock edge, I'm not concerned about lap lines, but it will cause my roller to have dents if I do a lot of the rock edge, and this is not what I want. All right, come back with my dry roller. Now I am gonna go this way, just because I seem to get more of an issue when I try to do really long runs when I back roll. So I am going to just back roll very lightly no pressure on the roller. I'm just making sure that everything's nice and smooth. Now I'll come back and I'll address those edges, rock edges. Now, when you're doing a rock edge, it's really important that you don't leave too much material in the low areas because what this will do is it'll cause it to dry very hazy. It won't dry clear. Just kind of go in different directions, making sure that I'm getting that product in there. Make sure you go under your edge as well. You don't want any of that to not get covered and then it'll show up shiny. All right, so that's a good run right there. I'll come back with my dry roller and I'll get all of that out. And with your dry roller being that this is a rock edge, I'm not really worried about, like I said, lap lines. My main concern is to get all of that product out of those low lying areas so that I don't have a big buildup. You can see that if I were to do my rock edge first, you can see how it dents my roller. And if I were to do my rock edge and then try to go back and do my surface, it would leave a lot of uh, marks. So that's why I'm saving that rock edge for the last. There we go. I love it already. I love the matte finish. All right, so we're gonna let this set for a full 24 hours. Now, I should be able to touch this in four to six hours, depending on my temperature, but I definitely don't want to use it for at least two days. Let's be uh, conservative and give it a full two days to cure. Uh, after that, you're good to go. So guys, if you like this kind of content, which I think you do because I am being inundated with you guys requesting more of this type of content, let me know in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up. 
and subscribe. Please subscribe to our channel. We're going to hit 100,000 by the summer, I promise you, and then we're going to party like it's 1999, guys. I'm so excited. Check out our website, rk3designs.com, for all of the epoxy products. And like I said at the beginning, I'll link the artistic painting studio in the description, as well as the foil that I used in this project. All right, guys, and remember, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.